Hello, I'm Naresh Nirbane. Today I'm going to present about the change in yield curve for the week starting from October 27, 2014, Monday, to October 31st, 2014, Friday. I'll also explain about the change in expected one-year rate using the expectation hypothesis. For the week, the yield curve rose. Since short-term rates rose more than the long-term rates, yield curve flattened. The short-term rates from year 1 to year 16 have risen almost more than double than for those between year 23 to year 30. Here is the table representing the difference in axial between Friday and Monday. As the table clearly displays, as the time to maturity increases, the rise in interest rates also thins out. Now I'll explain about the two major dips in the term structure. The first dip is for the rate for 10-year Treasury note. The Federal Reserve had managed to keep that role historically low to stimulate the economy, to enhance the borrowing and spending, and to help the labor market. The other dip is for the year starting from R16 to R23, for which we don't have any rates available, because Treasury discontinued to issue notes and bonds from 2001 to 2006. Using expectations hypothesis, the short-term projected interest rates also rose, but there is a lot of volatility in the market owing to the uncertainty. There are many dips and valleys in the expected one-year rates, but the most prominent one is for the 10-year note. The volatility is more persistent either to the front end or the tail end. Long-term rates have crossed the threshold of 3%. Um, the rate for 10-year note is 2.111%, uh, the rate for 1-year note is 0.11%. Overall, the market believes that there will be higher growth and inflation rates for the coming years. On Tuesday, the, there was slight steepening of yield curve because long-term treasury yields increase more than the short-term yield. Uh, there was meeting for uh, Fed's major wing FOMC, Federal Open Market Committee, and its conclusion was that economy is robust. This graph demonstrates that the higher spread for the long-term raise than the short-term raise caused the stiffening of the term structure. Similarly, the effect of stiffening of the term structure to the expected one-year rates was more pronounced to the challenge, where expected rates rose than those of Monday. Uh, FOMC had its second day meeting. Uh, its conclusion was that it has to discontinue its long continued bond buying program, also known as quantitative easing. As matrices from the market on unemployment rate, inflation rate, and growth rate were positive, the Fed decided it had to taper off quantitative easing that had managed to keep rates quite low across the spectrum. The yield curve flattened on Wednesday, short-term rates rose more than the long-term rates. This implies prices of short-term treasuries fell, while at the tail end rose, as the demand for long-term treasuries increased. The benchmark 10-year note rate also increased. Unsurprisingly, the expected rates increased for the short-term than at the long-term. However, the volatility still exists, which implies the market and investors are not having consistent expectations regarding the future rates. On Thursday, uh, there was no end consistent pattern for the term structure. Some notes and bonds saw uptick in the rates, some saw the fall in rates, especially 10-year notes saw larger fall. Thus, there was neither flattening nor steepening of the term structure. The stock market was very robust as Dow Jones industrial average rose almost 200 points the market's risk preference seems to be increasing because of the Wednesday's announcement that the Federal Reserve would discontinue quantitative easing. In overall, investors seem to have moved their investment from treasuries to stocks. Hence, the expected raise for year 9, 10, and 11 from Wednesday to Thursday changed a lot. This suggests that as the Fed loosens of QE, the 10-year note will see its rate to increase. On Friday, there was a Bank of Japan announcement that it will increase its bond buying program. Uh, despite its move to increase uh, such bond buying programs, which should have decreased rates across the board, yield curve actually flattened. 
This is clearly counterintuitive because rates should have rather increased. The expected one-year rates had lots of volatility, especially for year 9, 10, and 11. The market is reacting more forcefully to 10-year note rate after the Wednesday's FOMC announcement. Now the major conclusions for the week are the forecast for one-year expected rates according to expectations hypothesis suggests market and investors are reacting with uncertainty. Yield curve is nowhere near inversion, so the probability of recession in near future is low, though the yield curve flattened for the week. And lastly, growth and inflation expectations are quite higher. At Fed clearly announced this week it will discontinue its policy tool of quantitative easing. Thank you.